Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of IoT for All Showcase Series. I'm your host, Ryan Chacon. If you are watching this on YouTube, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so. We truly appreciate it. Um, all right, on today's episode, we have Matt Tyler, the VP of Strategic Innovation at Wachter. Uh, they are a leading solutions integrator uh, that enables business transformation by solving complex challenges to keep organizations successful. Um, and today, we talk about a very, very cool solution, a uh, very futuristic solution. Um, it is a holographic display technology solution that they are working on with a company called Proto, as well as Intel, um, to make to bring this mark or to bring this solution to market. Um, it has many different applications in retail for celebrities and influencers, musicians and artists, team sports, higher education, uh, you name it. Um, very cool stuff. Um, I don't want to give too much away in the intro. I want you to listen to everything Matt has to say about it. And if you have more, want to learn more information, we talk about that at the end where you can kind of dive a bit further into seeing examples of this, how it works, how to follow up. This could be a fit for, for your business or a business of your customer. Uh, but I think uh, you'll find a lot of value out of this episode and really enjoy learning about this awesome solution um, from Wachter. So um, with, that, with all that being said, uh, please enjoy this episode of IoT for All Solution Series. Welcome, Matt. Thanks for taking time to chat with me today. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Ryan. Absolutely. Yeah, looking forward to this conversation. Um, you have a lot of very exciting things going on at the company, and I wanted to, uh, it's a good opportunity for us to kind of talk about some of those to our audience. Uh, but let's kick this off by having you give a quick introduction about yourself to our audience. Yeah, so I'm Matt Tyler. I'm Vice President of Strategic Innovation at Wachter. Uh, we're a 93-year or 92-year-old uh, nationwide solutions integrator. Uh, I've been with the company about 18 years now, uh, came up from the industrial electrical space and into the networking world, and now uh, am responsible for our new business development, as well as our go-to-market services and solutions. So Fantastic. Great, for, uh, great to have yeah, you. That, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm happy you're here. Um, so let's before we jump into kind of the focus of this episode, I wanted to just get a, a little bit more detail as to an overview of the company, what you all do, the focus, the role you play in the space, kind of who your target audience is, just so as people are listening to this, they can kind of see and start visualizing how you might potentially fit in with what they do. Sure. So like I said, we're a 92-year-old solutions integrator. We have about 2,000 people across the country, uh, pre predominantly in the U.S., um, that are consulting, uh, implementing, and servicing all technology in pretty much every sector uh, across the country. So we have a, a number of different divisions that ranges from industrial controls and automation, electrical services, uh, network and infrastructure cabling. We're a Cisco Gold partner. We have an audio visual team as well as a physical security team and a number of other uh, smaller organizations within. And uh, as part of our IoT practice, uh, when we tie multiple one or more of those uh, groups together, that's really what our solutions are. So we don't manufacture hardware and we don't traditionally write software, although we do custom integrations. Uh, we are here to take off the shelf technology and integrate them uh, together across multiple uh, technology stacks. And from an industry standpoint, is there a focus industry kind of areas that you really kind of spend more of your time on? And um, if you could talk about any leading use cases that maybe you, you kind of uh, interact with the most? Sure. Retail is definitely our, our largest market segment that we serve, uh, although we're not limited to any. Uh, we, we, we do span from you know, higher education. We do a lot in healthcare. We do um, you know, industrial and commercial work uh, as well. So our main go to market strategy is to consult with our customers and build a long term relationship with them. We'll help guide them on the journey through the technology and how it will benefit them. So, um, you know, we've done grocery retailers. Uh, we've done projects for them where we've designed their data center straight through all of their WAN and, and LAN capabilities, their point of sale solutions, their wired and wireless on premise, as well as their security. And then even going on top of that are the analytics that go along with it. So we do point of sale data analytics mm -hmm. as compared to, you know, number of people that came through the store, how long they were standing in front of different products. We can really get into those one-off custom uh, engagements without sure. utilizing one-off custom technology. Fantastic. Um, so today's conversation is going to be focused around Proto, um, kind of what the solution is, what it does, how it works, the story behind it, all that kind of good stuff. 
Um, and I'd love it if we kick that part of the conversation off with you just introducing what the solution is, how it kind of came about, what was the, you know, the existing problem in the space, who it's aimed at, kind of a high level, kind of covering those topics, if you would. Sure. Proto is a relatively um, newer partnership. So Proto is a, uh, a great startup that's based out of Southern California, greater Los Angeles area that uh, the founder and CEO came from the large stage production of hologram shows like you've seen in Las Vegas and other areas. We may have some very large celebrities that have been brought back to life via hologram. <laughs> he had an idea in his head that uh, this technology can be brought to the masses in an affordable way, in a way that doesn't require a whole lot of expensive technology. So Proto developed a patented uh, unit called their Epic, which is about the size of a refrigerator where a human being or anything really can be beamed from point A to point B or multiple point Bs at simultaneously in real time, providing two-way audio and visual communications with the audience on the other end. Um, they're a relatively small company. I mean, large enough that the, the, the technology is here to stay, but they wanted to scale. So Walker, um, since we don't compete, so we're not manufacturing hardware sure. or writing software, right. uh, we were able to jump in with our 2000 W2 employees across the country and help them take their, their product to market wow. or, or, or to market faster, right? Yep. Uh, scale. Um, so we have nearly a thousand licenses across the country where we can install the power, um, the data communication it takes to uh, make these live beams happen. And then also deliver and uh, install the technology and support it on a day two perspective. So it was a great partnership between the two organizations uh, in, in the fact that they are a great small startup. We are a larger, more established field services organization. And right. we came together to deliver this to our retail customers. That's awesome. Um, I want to have you take me through kind of the total experience and what it really means. But I, I also understand that you are working with Intel in some capacity here. How does that kind of fit in to kind of the overall relationship and 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 um, kind of solution that's being used? Yeah. So this the solution is really two major components. One is the Epic, which is the display technology at the consumer. On the other end is a production studio. So think about it uh, just like as if you were going to a newsroom or, or even the studio you're in right now. It, it's a simple backdrop. It's a 4K camera, some lighting to give it that visual 3D effect. And, and those two units talk to each other. So I can be in Los Angeles, an Epic unit can be in New York, and I can instantly be in, in New York. Well, within the Proto unit, there's a number of different technologies from Intel, it, the processor, there is a real sense camera uh, that's in there as well. And then even on the backside, there's content management. So if you were to play um, pre-recorded content, it's going to come from a cloud-based uh, content management solution that is also running on Intel technology as well. So what we've done is help enable some more functions than uh, were currently available in the Proto. By utilizing that real sense camera, we're okay. able to take on demographics. So we know who's standing in front of the unit if they're actually paying attention to the content that is being displayed um, and then also helps provide that live beam feed back to the studio. So whoever's right. producing the content can see who's watching them. Fantastic. And so let's go ahead and talk through the actual, um, not just the experience that, that, that is created, but the value that it's created and the ROI that's created and, and talk through the use cases, um, because we've kind of shaped it in a high level of, of what is being done mm -hmm. with the solution. But how do you see adoption being or picking up there and, and that scale you've talked about, not just with the, the ability to create enough of these and have them available, but what, what, why are people going to be or should be looking into a solution like this? What does it enable them to do that they weren't able to do before? Um, and feel free to take that in kind of any industry direction you feel is comfortable. I know we talked about um, retail kind of at a high level, but just want to dive in there a good bit. Well, there's, uh, I'll, I'll utilize retail since we're on that topic. But, um, you know, during the pandemic, online shopping became the number one go-to uh, for most people. So trying to get people back into the brick and mortar stores is a challenge for retailers these days. You, you almost have to provide them with an immersive experience or a, a one-time one experience that they've never had before, something that they've never seen that they have to get out and see. 
this technology allows for that. This is the why factor, right? You have to go to the store because there's, you know, P Diddy is in the store. He talks to you, right? We were just at a trade show where we were displaying the technology and Howie Mandel beamed into our booth and was talking with our customers in our booth. It, it's, it's just that wow factor of having that ability to interact with brand ambassadors, celebrities, yep. whatever it might be. So it's the, the reason to come there. Two, great for advertising, right? Revenue generation. If you're a retailer and you're selling other products, you can sell advertising space. It mm-hmm. gives customers the ability to see the products in a way that they've never seen before, whether it's exploded views or in 3D live renderings. Um, it, it, it's tremendously impactful from an advertising perspective, as well as a yeah. revenue generator for the retailer as well. Uh, but even beyond that, uh, everybody's experiencing workforce uh, labor issues, right? Lack of labor, can't get enough people to do their job. So you want to engage with your employees a little bit more. With this device as well, you can have a CEO that can beam into an individual store and have a one-on-one or a fireside chat with that store if they're a top performer or something like that. So that's really where the value comes is in all of those different use cases. Um, we even have uh, home improvement stores where you might have a celebrity um, DIY person, say from HGTV, they can beam into a store and, and, and put on a you know, sure. birdhouse building class with kids on a Sunday morning. Yeah. You know, the, 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 the possibilities are endless, but it is definitely the fact of drawing people back into those stores. And it's and you said it's two way communication. So the person that is the act in the hologram in the hologram itself is able to see what is happening on the other side, communicate with them. So like you said, you could do an HGTV thing with building uh, birdhouses with kids. You could even I guess in to some degree scale that engagement um, as you have more experts, more celebrities. You you know you name it without having to physically send them or have them be there in person. Correct. Yep. Okay. So you can take um, an adventure retailer that may have guide services, right? Maybe they sell fly fishing and hunting gear Um, in their, their urban areas where those stores are, you, you might have a um, higher spend uh, population where they come in and they, they're going to take an adventure to North Dakota to go fly fishing on a weekend. Mm -hmm. Well, now with this hologram technology, they can put that box in their store. Mm -hmm. They can live beam, the guide, the tour guide in on that Wednesday before and say, you know, these flies are biting the best. The weather is going to be like this. So you should dress with this type of clothing and you're going to need this type of gear for camping that night. You can ultimately convert that into a higher or a a higher dollar basket spend with that customer because you have that one-on-one experience with that guide before you even go out to that site. And is it able to do recorded content too, or is it only kind of live two-way back and forth? Live, pre-recorded, digitally okay. created, really doesn't matter. We're, we're putting this in NFT museums now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're building out a, a museum in, in New York City that's going to be getting these um, that's to, to show off the new NFT collections from artists. That's awesome. So we've kind of talked about um, you know the retail side here. Where do you, what other applications are there that our listeners should be paying attention to to understand how this technology could be applied to their business? Like they may not necessarily like if, if for those non-retail organizations mm-hmm. that um, see this as a viable option for them, what other use cases are there either that exists now that you are involved in or you potentially see this being applicable in as the technology continues to improve scale increases and adoption increases? Sure. So you, you take um, uh, churches. You, you, there's some mega churches down in uh, the sure. southeast part of the country where yep. you have a, a main church with a pastor that can live beam into multiple remote campuses uh, simultaneously on a Sunday morning. We have... Um, uh, higher education. You may have a, a professor of some particular subject that can beam into multiple campuses simultaneously and, and do a lecture. Yeah. We've even talked to um, National Geographic about putting this in their the corporate headquarters where their explorers that are on top of Mount Everest can live beam back in and talk to customers <laughs> as they're coming through their facilities. Wow. And then even down into logistics and manufacturing, you know, these can go out on the plant floor. If you ever step foot on a a, a logistics facility or manufacturing facility, there's some level of training, safety orientation that you're going to need to do before you go in. This hologram hologram technology is a full touchscreen interface. So you can go and select what content you need to to get trained on. 
It's a, an immersive experience. So if you're showing off uh, PPE or safety equipment, you can show a full body figure of someone you know, yeah. putting on their safety glasses, their hard hats, all that kind of good stuff. And then, like I said, you can also have the CEO drop in on that same technology and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with that mm -hmm. local um, facility, or that Fair. local group. Very cool. Uh, one of the last questions I wanted to ask you to kind of round out our conversation there for our audience out there who's interested in this technology. Um, what does the adoption process look like? Like, how does that usually go? Is it a pretty kind of quick from initial conversation to deployment for them? Or, or what does that kind of look like? What can they expect? What should they be thinking about going into that? That's the uh, the genius of the, the founder of Proto is he okay. made it extremely simple and affordable. So it, it, it's a 30 minute demonstration. We, we talk through with a customer what their use case is or what they're, they're trying to achieve. Uh, we may make some tweaks or tunes, but uh, it, it's a pretty quick process. Um, the, the technology is readily available today. So you know, it, if we have a conversation today, I could have you the technology next week or within a couple of weeks. That's fantastic. Um, so I guess to follow up to that and to kind of finish this up here for our audience who wants to learn more, who feels like this is either something I need to know more about, or this is a great fit for kind of something that I do now, what, how can they follow up? How can they get started? Who sh like, what, what's the reach out look like for them? Um, just to kind of, even just to stay up to date on, on everything that happened over there. Sure. You can just reach out to us at www.walker.com forward slash proto. And you can learn about all of the uh, different use cases as well as get engaged with us and we can help you along the, the journey. Fantastic. Well, Matt, you guys have some very exciting stuff going on. Um, the company seems fantastic. Uh, I love the fact that uh, in our previous discussion talked about just the makeup of the company. Everyone is, is like you said, W2 employee. So it's a very unique kind of uh, thing that I think a lot of our audience may not really understand how unique that is, but how, how beneficial that can be for an organization and for the customers and the stuff that you're all building. So uh, I think our audience is going to find this very fascinating and I love the, um, love the technology, love the solution. And I think it'd be very interesting to continue to, to see all these different applications of it in the real world, because it sounds like you already have some great stuff going on. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. All right, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that episode of the IoT Solution video series from us at IoT for All. Uh, if you did, we'd really appreciate it if you would like this video and subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so. If you have a potential solution or something in the space that you would love to showcase to our audience, please email me directly at ryan at iotforall.com. I'd be happy to discuss what it is that you have going on and find ways to get that out to our audience. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you next time.